Next week's expected dynamic system generates a rare day six and seven severe weather alert as the latest data suggests a stronger system with high winds, large hail, and a potential for an outbreak of tornadoes. There's also been a change in the timing of the system. All the latest details coming your way next. Welcome back, everybody, to the Weather Nerds YouTube page. I'm your host, Greg Majeski, making a difference one subscriber at a time. And I've got a big update here on next week at Storm. We set up the alert yesterday, and it looks like the Storm's Prediction Center has issued a very rare Day 6 and Day 7 outlook for this storm system expected to hit the country next week. Now, there's been one change is it looks like everything's been kind of shifted to the right about 24 hours. So the day six outlook that you're looking at currently, uh, this is mostly for Wednesday, going from Illinois, stretching back in here toward Oklahoma and Arkansas as we go through the day on your Wednesday. And then that begins to shift here on day seven, where a big chunk of the Midwest as well as the Southeast gets in on action as we go into your Thursday. So. Before we go ahead and dive into the latest model data, if you'd like to get further updates on this storm system, uh, please consider subscribing to my channel. Hit the subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you're alerted on future content. And give me a thumbs up, leave a comment down below as it truly does help with the YouTube algorithm and I do appreciate your support. All right, got plenty to get into. Let's go ahead and take a look at the latest European model. So once again, we're going to first begin by looking at the jet stream. That's the amount of uh, wind energy available at the upper levels of the atmosphere, around, roughly about 30,000 feet. And we're looking at the zero Z European. We're going to start on Sunday and we're going to progress this thing through the duration as we're going to watch the interaction between two jet streams come together and uh, set off the potential for this severe weather event that we're looking for next week. So let me get out of the way here. Again, we're looking at this low pressure off the California coast on Sunday. Uh, that's gonna bring some pretty healthy rains and snows across the higher elevations of California with that system. And then we're gonna watch this other energy come in here from the uh, Gulf of Alaska and dive in across the west as they kind of come together uh, here across the western portions of the United States as we go into early next week. So let's go ahead and take this forward in time, watch that low kind of phase kind of lose its punch as it kind of phases with that dive in the jet stream going into the day on Tuesday. So you've got this dipping of the of the polar jet stream coming here, the subtropical getting amplified. You're seeing the very high winds across areas of Texas stretching back in here toward uh, New Mexico and Arizona. Uh, some very strong jet energy winds there upwards of 140 plus knots. And as this progresses further to the east, it's a little bit slower. Again, it was a little faster than yesterday's run, but by the time we get into the middle of the day on Wednesday, we'll be watching the severe weather with this jet energy making this turn in here. And when you get that turn, that's when you're looking at the active weather to kind of fire off here across areas of Arkansas and uh, back toward Texas and up toward Illinois, right through this zone uh, for the day on Wednesday. Now, as we go into overnight Wednesday night into Thursday, a little concerning as the jets are kind of phasing together there. You're seeing the jet kind of diving here. You're seeing the southern jet coming through here. There's also just a little bit of what we call a negative tilt here to this um, branches of the jet stream. And when you get a negative tilt, that can add additional spin to the atmosphere and really cause these storms to be quite strong and dynamic. That's why I've been using that word dynamic to explain this system as we go into Thursday morning. So overnight, Wednesday night, Thursday, and boy, I hate those nighttime events. I've mentioned that multiple times on these broadcasts, but Wednesday night could be the strongest as the storms are gonna be setting up there and then kind of continuing throughout the day on Thursday before this low and this trough begins to slowly lift on out across the Northeast as we go into Friday and Saturday and kind of clearing on out. And then we'll track another big dip in the jet stream here across the West Coast as we go into the following weekend heading into the first weekend of March. So we talked about the jet energy here. And again, we're talking specifically going into to your Wednesday and Thursday, walking the jet stream here, going here, uh, advancing throughout the day on Wednesday. You're seeing a pretty potent jet stream there and it really gets fired up going into Thursday, Wednesday night and Thursday there. Uh, with the two jet streams working together. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the latest as far as wind shear for this system. So we're gonna take a closer look here at the continental United States. We're looking at available wind shear from the surface 
up to about 500 millibars. That's about 18,000 feet. And what wind shear is, that's when you get changing winds when, from with height. So you're talking about winds that may be coming out from the south and then at the upper levels may be blowing in from the west. So the greater the wind shear, the greater the spin in the atmosphere to support supercell thunderstorms, a squall line, and the potential obviously for tornadoes. So we're gonna start specifically here on the 27th on Tuesday late in the day and going into your Wednesday. So we're gonna watch that area again. We're watching from Illinois stretching back over toward Oklahoma. And you see this Wednesday morning uh, with some of the reds kind of picking up in here from Oklahoma, Kansas, and Missouri. And it really picks up in the afternoon. Notice that we get a little bit of yellows in there across areas of Illinois stretching back to Missouri and Arkansas. And this begins to shift overnight into your late in the day on Wednesday, going into around midnight, which of course means severe weather at night, always a problematic here across areas of say Ohio, Kentucky, heading down into Tennessee and into Alabama. So we're talking about this area right in here. And this trough, uh, unlike yesterday, would look like it was flattening out it's not gonna flatten out. So we still could see some strong storms and uh, some very gusty winds into areas in the Northeast. I mean, we got a tremendous amount of wind shear here late in the day here across areas of the Northeast. Although I think uh, most of the storms should be exited from the South south at that point as this trough slowly pulls on out and we see things begin to improve across areas of the country as a, a storm system exits and we watch another storm system kind of plow into Southern California going into the following weekend. So we know we got a lot of jet stream energy. We got plenty of cape and spin to the atmosphere. Let's take a closer look at the temperatures and see the clash of the air masses and see what available heat energy might be there for these storms. Now, one of the things that's been very consistent with these models just is how sharp of a dividing line we're gonna have with this cold front. We're talking a very, a very sharp drop in temperatures once it goes through. And we're talking record-breaking high temperatures here on your Tuesday. Check out these levels here, well into the 70s into areas of Kansas and into Missouri uh, throughout the day, into the 50s into areas of Minnesota. But you go behind that front, you're talking single digits up here across areas of North Dakota. So a very sharp dividing line. So as we go forward into Wednesday, look what happens as we get into uh, later in the day on your Wednesday. Look at this temperature drop off here uh, as we go into Wednesday afternoon. We're talking about mid 60s across areas of Illinois and then looking at 21 degrees back in here over toward Dubuque. So we're talking about a 40 degree swing behind that cold front uh, as it kind of moves on through. So that clash of the air masses is quite significant especially on the northern portion of this. And as that front dives to the south, as we go into uh, your Wednesday night, again, you got a very strong cold front coming through here. The only thing that's missing at night is that you lose a little bit of that latent heat for the overnight hours. But again, the dynamics are quite strong with this system. So that may not matter all that much. And you see that warm air push into the into New England as well, as we see the temperatures drop off behind this front heading into Thursday. Uh, as you can see that cold front kind of exiting here across areas of the Southeast as we go into Thursday morning. And then uh, finally clears off into New England, just some very cold air uh, setting up behind the system as we go into Friday morning. Uh, quite nippy here across the Northeast into the single digits. And we got freezing temperatures even getting down into the Southeast once again with some pretty cold air. But I'll tell you one thing, once that that moves on out uh, we got a big big old rise in temperatures on the back side of this as you'll see a big warm-up across the country uh, in the middle of the country as we go into this upcoming weekend as we'll see a big warmth here building once again before that next storm system comes in maybe another round of severe weather going beyond the 10 day into the following week but that is a significant far off event we don't have to worry about for now all right we know we got a good clash in the air masses let's go ahead and finally take a look at the latest precipitation. We'll track those storms uh, as we go into Wednesday and Thursday with this next storm system. So we're gonna focus on the precipitation type. We're gonna start on your Sunday, the 25th, and we're gonna take you through the duration of the event as it crosses the country from coast to coast. And uh, there's different parts of the storm, but it's initially gonna start off as a bit of a winter storm, especially across areas of the Intermountain region. They're gonna get some pretty healthy snows. And then we'll watch this quickly move along and evolve into a severe weather event with a pretty decent squall line. So uh, let's go and get me myself out of here as we're gonna be watching things evolve here on your Sunday, 
pretty quiet across the country, not looking too bad there, but as we go throughout the day, uh, we're gonna be noticing some of this energy across the Pacific Northwest. This is the stuff that's diving here to the south. You got the stuff off the California coast with that low pressure kind of beginning absorbed into the trough as that moves off toward the east and onshore. So that'll provide some pretty good rains there across areas of California from uh, Northern California, even down into Southern California, and some pretty decent snows, obviously, here across the Sierra Nevada. You're also noticing the snows breaking out across areas of Montana and Idaho, right up in here. Uh, this will be diving off toward the south as well as we go into your Tuesday. So by the time we get into Tuesday morning, uh, pretty significant snows there across areas of maybe near Salt Lake City and stretching back over toward Nevada as well as the storm system uh, will begin to slowly kick out as we go into your Wednesday. We're gonna have a nice warm surge here. Look at all this uh, southern air coming in here and the cold air on the back side of this system as we go into your Wednesday. And Wednesday is when things get pretty active and significant. You've seen some storms starting to form there across areas of Illinois and into Missouri uh, for the morning hours, but it's really in the afternoon as we get that nice dynamic heating taking place there. That's when the warmest air is and you notice all the isobars very it's gonna be very windy along in here with this squall line and of course you'll be watching for any potential for supercells out ahead of that squall line you get a little bit of wraparound snow as we saw a very sharp dividing line there with the temperatures behind this cold front quickly going from the 60s into the 20s over a very short space of period there uh, uh, so as we go forward here the the storms will move off toward the east so late in the day by around seven o'clock on your wednesday we're tracking the active weather from Ohio stretching down into the southeast toward Alabama and then the overnight hours coming into metro Atlanta say around two in the morning or so going into Thursday morning across areas of the mid-Atlantic and the southeast we're watching it right as that front comes into the east there and starts to clear it going into early Thursday morning and now of course the timing on this could change a little bit but you're still looking at some pretty decent storms kind of going in across areas of New England uh, couldn't rule out some very strong gusty winds across New England as well as that frontal system starts Starts to clear and then we'll see things begin to slowly improve which is some plain old cold air some nice cold air set up across the midwest the northeast as well as the southeast as we watch our next storm system here off the west coast that'll be diving down into california and bringing some heavy rains once again into that area as we go into the following weekend heading in toward march 2nd so a very dynamic flow of the jet stream here to say the least as we watch again this next storm system here out on the west coast here going into march 2nd of the following week. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the winter component of the storm. I want to go ahead and take a look at the predicted projected snow totals with this. So let's go ahead and take this out. I'm just going to take this out for the duration of the event uh, for the next 10 days. And you see some significant snows there across areas of the Intermountain region. So uh, again, you're looking at some very heavy snows across areas of the Sierra Nevada with those two storm systems. But uh, notice uh, quite significant snows here across areas of Colorado, stretching back toward Wyoming, Idaho getting some heavy snows, and Montana. And they've been running a little bit low on the low side, especially areas of Idaho and Montana with their snowpack, so it does help there. You do notice that, that as that storm system goes by, we do have a winter element of this system. You see the snows back here on the back side of that system going from Kansas, Missouri, uh, well, well not Missouri, northern Missouri, extreme northern Missouri, Iowa and over toward Wisconsin and then up toward Michigan uh, with the wraparound moisture and just a little bit of snows there across areas of New England uh, with this system. So the, the heavier snows will be definitely out into the Intermountain region and across the Sierra Nevada uh, as that storm system crosses the country. Now as far as the rainfall totals on this, uh, because it's moving so fast, I don't think flooding is going to be a significant uh, problem with this. Uh, let me go to the uh, total precipitation here uh, once again. And th this initial rain hit you're seeing, this is the weak system that's kind of coming in on Thursday and Friday. So just so you know that that's what's coming in here uh, in the short term. But the long term, as I go all the way out, you notice we're not really adding a lot of heavy rains in here. We're talking one to two inches uh, potentially in here with, with that rain as it moves on in. But I don't think flooding will be a problem with that squall line as it moves on through. Uh, but the two storm systems that we're tracking out on the West Coast, significant rains out here, out in California from uh, the Washington state heading down into California. Uh, that will continue to be a problem with flooding out there as that continues to see a couple of atmospheric river events that will be causing some problems out on the West Coast. 
Well, as we get set to wrap up the last week of February, looks like we're in store for some very active weather beginning out on the West Coast in the Intermountain region as we head into Monday and Tuesday of next week, and that evolving into some severe weather uh, further off toward the east for the areas of the Midwest and the South as we head into Wednesday and Thursday. So this will likely change. Nothing is etched in stone this far out. So if you want to continue to get some alerts and updates on the system, please consider subscribing to the channel. Hit the notification bell so you learn when I update new content. And uh, give me a comment. Let me know what you think below and uh, give me a thumbs up. I really do appreciate the support as I continue to grow my own weather channel here in the YouTube universe. All right, that's your update for now. You guys take it easy. Look forward to seeing you next time. Until then, be good, stay safe, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye for now.